Hey there, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> wanted to do a short video. I was in the, I was with a buyer yesterday, and uh, we got engaged in a conversation that I think's worth sharing uh, among everybody here, and uh, kind of shedding some light on that conversation, and and maybe seeing what you guys' thoughts are at the end here. Uh, you can leave them down in the comments. But uh, the conversation, the gist of it had to do about timing the market, uh, buying versus renting, and things of that nature. Um, this particular person is a single lady, uh, very young, first time home buyer, and uh, was asking a lot of really, really good questions or you know, bringing some concerns to the table that I thought were, were totally legit. So. Uh, but before we dive into that, I want to share a testimonial with you real quick. Uh, got this testimonial in. It's on, the, on our website, the wyomingdreamteam.com. Uh, 10 out of 10. What I liked about Jason was his time that he took to answer our questions. He was professional and knowledgeable as well. I would use him again. Thanks. Uh, so anyway, thanks for that testimonial. That's super cool to hear. Uh, and kind of what happened yesterday that's the type of conversations that we're engaged in uh, answering questions uh, kind of understanding the process of buying uh, and then later leading into selling real estate uh, and this this conversation would pertain to buying homes buying industrial properties income producing properties uh, commercial farm and ranch uh, urban agriculture properties whatever like the theories here aren't going to change. So let's dive into that. Right now, it's uh, we're experiencing record high prices across the board, um, super short on inventory, and a lot of buyer pressure. And so yesterday, the buyer brings up to me the thought that, um, you know, maybe, you know, is it worth buying now? Uh, interest rates are where they are, and we don't know. Uh, if we should buy or stay renting and we, we dove into that rabbit hole and talked about what that meant for this particular buyer. We, we know what they're paying for rent. We can assume that rents are going to go up here in the, in the future if the economy stays where it's at and we, we keep seeing these outside pressures being applied to our real estate market. There's a shortage of homes uh, for the amount of buyer volume that we're experiencing right now. And um, so anyway, we can assume that rents are going to continue to kind of stair step up in some fashion. And so is it worth buying a home and accepting the interest rates where they are? And so we broke that down a little bit. Uh, you know, when you buy real estate, you're making multiple transactions at once. You're buying the piece of real estate and then you're buying a mortgage if you don't have cash and then you're having to buy insurance on top of that. So there's like three separate transactions that have to all come together at the closing table uh, to make the deal work. And so we broke that down and, and talked about what that meant for her. And then we talked about, well, is it, you know, let's talk about the, the box with you know record we're looking at record high prices for real estate right is it worth buying right now or is it worth waiting and continuing to rent and here's simply put here's my advice if you're going to buy high sell high if you're going to buy high and and you end up selling low like job change you get married uh get divorced um you know you just move on like my life goes on right doesn't matter what the change is in life life goes on uh, say you're gonna sell say you did buy high and markets do correct you know let's, let's get that out there markets do correct we we can see the real estate market go down and then come back up in a, in kind of a short given window um, even though you know we've seen for decades and decades real estate as a whole tends to trickle upward and appreciate over time in, in between three and four percent on on average um, but you can find short windows in short time periods where the real estate market dipped right and so you could be faced with that like 
you buy high and then something changes and you have to sell low. If you're in this position right now, you need to get in the mindset that you could have to end up selling lower than what you purchased for as far as the value, the, the, the purchase price, the actual purchase price. And if that's so, that can be okay. As long as where you're moving to, the markets have also dipped. So if you're, say for example, you're 200,000 and the markets dip 10%. Well, now your home's worth uh, 180,000. That's, that's what the market will bear at the time of your sale. And you move on to your next property over here and you know, the markets dipped the same 10% in the same time frame. you know, assuming you stay at the $200,000 threshold, uh, you're going to, your entry price is going to be 180, right? And so that's okay. You're essentially just transferring this loss equity here to over here, and you're going to ride it out for, for the long, you're going to play the long game again. And, and sit there and wait for prices to, you know, start to appreciate markets to recover, uh, things of that nature. Uh, what I typically have seen in the past is if you sell low over here, it may give you an opportunity to move up as far as stature of homes. You know, maybe you got a, a two bed, one bath home over here at 200 or you sell at 180. You bought it at 200, you sell it at 180, and then you get over here, the markets have dipped, and you, your income probably hasn't changed. Um, your affordability is probably a different, it's different than what it was when you bought property A. So maybe affordability is at a higher level here. Now you can move up into a three bed, two bath, or, uh, you know, three bed, two bath on acreage, or, you know, now you know, use the country kid here and now you're headed back closer to the ranch over here. Now you can buy that ranch yet or, you know, whatever the circumstances are, it doesn't matter. My point is when the markets dip, there becomes these opportunities over here to step up in real estate stature uh, or real estate, um, you know, classification, if you will. And those are opportunities that you should take advantage of and be looking for. It's not, Hey, I bought high over here and the markets dip. Now I'm losing money. Uh, and technically the answer is yes. But if you're, if you're forecasting out into the future and looking at your f financial portfolio of what it's going to be in the long term, um, you know, you, you got to, you got to get over this, this mental mindset here. Um, now there are those that, you know, the, that back to, back to my conversation with this buyer yesterday, as it turns out, as with any buyer, first time home buyer, experienced buyer, of any sort of degree, uh, you're listening to the news, you see stuff online, you got people in your inner circle that you're listening to and, and they want to provide advice and all that's all awesome. Right. Um, as it turns out, someone close to this individual, um, had experienced a dip, uh, and this dip occurred as I dug a little deeper, this dip occurred around the, the 2016 mark, um, all of which in Northeast Wyoming, we did see a significant dip. Uh, there was panic in the marketplace. Uh, it was unwarranted. Uh, we declared that being unwarranted, but, um, uh, again, once the masses, once the sheep kind of start running, uh, if you're going to be a part of the herd, it, it's, it's not good. And unfortunately they were part of the herd. Um, and maybe they couldn't afford, I don't know their situation. You know, I'm just, I'm just kind of brainstorming here. Um, you know, maybe they were forced to sell by some decree of, of something that was out of their control, but what had happened, the facts are this, they had to sell or they did sell in a down market and they got burned on the, on the equity, what, you know, their equity position and fast forward, um, they didn't make a purchase and that's proven to be catastrophic because since then 
Prices have done nothing for, we're at year seven now. So 2016 to, to current, it's been seven years. They've done nothing but go up, up, up. And they're stuck. Like they're, they've been holed up in a rental. Uh, you know, now they're, they're re, you know, whatever happened, they've kind of recovered financially to some degree. But they're wanting to time the market and wait for it to go down again, right? They're gonna they're gonna buy in a down market. Well, the real question is, what was their opportunity cost? You know, if they had they purchased back then and not been renting this whole time, and been placing, if they had to get a mortgage, been putting money on that mortgage, suppressing the principal, getting that equity position grown between the the liability and, and what it's worth uh, instead of paying you know 100% rent uh, that's a hundred percent interest rate right I mean let's face it if you're paying rent that's a hundred percent interest rate you are never getting a principal buy down you're never getting an equity position nothing the only thing you're getting is hopefully you got a good landlord that's taking care of you taking care of the property and letting you live comfortably uh, but outside of that, you could do that in your own home if you owned it uh, or your own piece of real estate. So I, I didn't disregard the concerns that were brought to the table yesterday because the, they're, they're valid and they're real and they're emotional. Uh, but the point of this is uh, if you do end up buying high, you, you just got to you got to plant the seed right now. You could end up selling for less. The answer is yes. A market correction could come and you're going to have to be faced with that if you choose to sell or have to sell in the future. Just know, play the game, be an investor, be diligent, be smart, be intelligent. If you sell low, buy low and take, and again, take the opportunity to maybe move up um, in whatever classification that could be. Maybe it's you know, you, you got an entry level home here and now all of a sudden you can buy a, a multiplex and you got rental income coming in on the side or, uh, you know, you go buy that ranch ad or get some, you know, get some elbow room or whatever, you know, everybody's story is a little different. Everybody's wants and needs are a little different. And, um, but what's not going to change is you could take advantage of the situation and not play the victim. And, um, you know, there are some folks that get lucky and they do buy, you know, they, their entry into the real estate investing uh, game. They do get to buy low. And, you know, those people took chances on economies in um, local markets that others weren't so confident in or they weren't willing to take a chance. And good on them, you know. Uh, back to the 2016 episode. We were coaching buyers left and right. Buy, buy, buy. Like interest rates are low. The real estate market's dipped. This is one of these times in your life that you're going to look back and say, man, I wish I could have bought more real estate. And we're seeing it already. And, um, you know, I'm one of those. I wish I was, you know, I could have bought more and more properties. But, you know, you can, not everybody's uh, got a silver spoon. Not everybody's a trust fund baby. And, um, you can only get what you could get. And I'm super fortunate that, you know, we took some risks back then when nobody else was, was willing to, um, cause they're really paying off now. Um, so there are some people that do get to time it right, or do get to experience these buy low, sell high, you know, uh, enjoy the, the escalator ride up and, um, and really improve their financial health and financial portfolios and their net worth. Um, and then there's those that get, you know, it's always in the middle. You're always kind of midstream. You, you kind of write, you buy right there in the middle and then you sell right there in the middle. And it's, it's kind of this teeter totter back and forth. And in all honesty, back to, uh, opportunity costs, those people are just as financially healthy or healthier than, uh, you know, being able to buy low and sell high sometimes, um, uh, because the adversity, you know, in the long play again, the adversity just isn't there. And, and that steady climb up on the appreciation of real estate values is, is always in your favor. So um, I, I think 
at the end of the day, whatever scenario or whatever mind game or whatever bits and pieces of information somebody in your circle gives you, I think the one thing you don't want to do that's for sure and confirmed, um, don't sell low and wait. Um, because market's correct and it's going to go up. Um, and it, it's unfortunate whatever, you know, whatever the, the secondary persons or people's scenarios were, it's, it's truly unfortunate. And I don't like hearing those stories, but they're real and they happen. Uh, and they happen to a lot of people. Um, and it's unfortunate maybe they didn't have somebody in their inner circle educating them and coaching them or a good realtor, you know, coaching them or a good mortgage lender coaching them or whatever, uh, financial advisor. Um, that's unfortunate they weren't surrounded by good quality professionals. Um, but anyway, it was a good conversation yesterday with this buyer. It really kind of lit a fire in, in doing this video for you all today. And I hope it helps. Um, I don't think I missed anything kind of covering this topic. And, it, and I, do, I do think it's warranted talking about right now because interest rates are higher than we're used to seeing in the past decade and prices are higher um so at the end of the day it's like this like buy buy what you can buy or buy what makes you happy let's fill the, let's look at this box first what can you afford what can make you happy what can give you what you want and need and then we look at the the mortgage if you have to get a mortgage okay let's what's that going to produce and what's the payments that's going to be required out of you monthly uh, to, to make this work. Um, if you can afford it, you can afford it. Obviously, we've never been advocates of, of overspending or going over budget. Uh, you know, if, you're, if your monthly payment puts too much strain on, on the end of your budget every month, uh, we, should, we should not make that purchase. Um, but to some degree, if you can handle it, right now and live this out short term uh, there is a philosophy of of you know buy the house rent the rate um, buy the land rent the rate um, you know, buy the buy the real estate uh, get a short-term mortgage get the piece of real estate that you're happy with that's going to bring you joy and and safety and all the other pleasures that you're desiring in the world and when the interest rates go down, refinance it, uh, and then get into a safer payment range. Um, you know, if you can always refinance when the rates go down, but you're not always going to be able to find the, the right property at the right price. And so step back and think about that and what it means for you and or your family, um, and see where that conversation goes. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, everyone's situation is going to be different. Everyone's concerns, past experiences, uh, future goals are going to be different. So what that answer is to me is going to be different than what it is for you. Uh, my whole job here is to just help you facilitate those thoughts and see where it goes. Um, and it could be that it's not that you're comfortable buying right now and that's going to be okay. Um, you know, you'll get on the sidelines, sit on the fence and, and when something corrects that's more better, um, then we go at that time. Um, you know, insurance. Let's talk about insurance for a second. Boy, insurance rates have, here in the last 12 months have just really skyrocketed. And um, they are what they are. Like insurance companies got to hedge their bets. They got underwriters that are running the math formulas that tell them what they need to charge based on the, the level of risk per a given area. And... Um, you know they, they've been they've been getting hurt here in the past and, and they're gonna recalculate our our insurance levels our insurance payments and uh, charge appropriately so uh, it's never in insurance companies just don't go broke like they they have to they have to move and pivot and and run their businesses accordingly too so um, and some are worse than others some are better than others um, and that, that's a whole different conversation. But 
what the point in this conversation is once we find once we find the property that you really want now we got to get the insurance quote and some of that quote is going to depend on the past history of that property you know if there's been multiple claims on that property and it shows up in the clue report uh, now all of a sudden you know what we thought was going to be here the payments are up here well golly what's that mean to you as the buyer you know are you going to be able to tolerate that uh, so we add a plus b plus c and you know now there's our monthly payment or a monthly obligation to be able to purchase this property um, you know sometimes that can be a deal breaker uh, so it's not we got to look at all facets of this uh, and it's not always just the purchase price so so anyway uh, if you got any questions past experiences disagree with me whatever uh, leave some notes down in the uh, comment section down below I'd love to hear from you and, and get some interaction and, and just just see if you what your thoughts are uh, so anyway hope this helps and uh, catch you on the next video talk to you later